Hey dancers, welcome back to my channel. My name is Julie and I'm the owner here at Broche Ballet, I'm a ballet school now only online just for adults. So today I wanna to talk to you all about how to improve faster with ballet. This is a question I get a lot, especially because us as ballet dancers, we're attracted to ballet because of its sort of perfectionist nature and because there is sort of like an ideal, um, where there's lots of details, there's lots of nitty gritty stuff for us to work on. So we do tend to be perfectionist type people who like to improve quickly and who like to get better at things. And I love that and I'm like that too. So one question I get a lot is how can I improve faster? Now dancers come to me, I've got my notes here. I've got lots I wanna tell you guys about this topic. Um, feel free to chat with me in the chat box. Let me know your questions. I've got a little bit that I wanna cover and then I'll get to your questions. So people come to me and ask if they should buy fancy stretching tools. Um, should I buy this strap that I saw online? Should I buy this, uh, this, this thing, this other tool? I saw this new fancy thing. So-and-so on Instagram was using this new fancy thing. They ask me, what sh what's the perfect clothes? What should I wear for ballet class? What's the perfect shoes? What shoes should I wear? I don't have the right flooring. What's the exact perfect flooring? Um, what's the exact perfect schedule I should create to learn ballet? Um, how much time do I need? What's the exact specific exercises I should be doing every day? I want to talk about how none of that stuff is important. I want to talk about what I think are the most important things to helping you improve quickly in ballet. I think the three top skills you need to improve in ballet, and really this is anything in life, number one, humility number two, curiosity, and number three, discipline. So I wanna talk about how we get that, what it is, how it applies to ballet. So you notice I didn't mention flexibility, I didn't mention your weight, I didn't mention your flooring, I didn't mention anything like that. Basically, you need to be interested in learning. You need to be curious about what the whole thing is about. You need to be humble enough to be in a place where you're not afraid to question whether you already did it correctly. And you need to have discipline or develop discipline. You don't need to already have these skills. You can get them through this process um, to continue showing up day after day. So from this, from these three key things, think these is like your primary colors, humility, curiosity, and discipline. From this, you can develop body awareness. What is body awareness? Body awareness is being able to listen to your teacher say, engage your core, and you knowing if your core is already engaged, or not, and then how to engage it. So knowing about your body, being able to communicate with your body and the specific muscles to be able to respond to what your teacher is telling you. So body awareness comes from curiosity and humility. If you're curious, what does my teacher mean engage my core? What does my teacher mean to turn out my legs more? Then you'll wonder and you'll start to build that body awareness if you're curious about what they're talking about and you're open to exploring what they're talking about. And humility is really, really important here. If your teacher says turn out your legs more and your immediate reaction in your mind is, well, I already turned out my legs, that's not the way. That's not the way to get better and improve. The reaction should always be, can I look for more? Is there more? My teacher's asking me to turn out my legs more? What do they mean? How could I possibly turn out my legs more? Because I think I've already turned out as much as I have, but my teacher must see something in me that would mean that I can go further. So being really humble and curious about the fact that there might be more in there that your teacher sees, because that really is tapping into your potential. Um, consistency is another big one that you're going to develop. So consistency is going to come from that dis from that curiosity and from that discipline. So number one thing, like stretching, people ask me, how do I get flexible? do it. Stretch every single day. Stretch for five minutes. I'd rather have you stretch for five minutes every single day than an hour once every other week. You're going to get maybe the same amount of time, but if you go five minutes a day versus an hour every other week, your body is continually exposed to the motion. It will get in your nervous system faster. It'll get in your body faster. That consistency is really, really important. If you're doing a plie, only five plies every single day versus one full ballet class every other week, I think you're going to make especially in the very beginning of your journey, progress way faster if you're consistent about it. Doesn't matter how long you're doing it, but consistency is really, really important when you're talking about retraining yourself, retraining your body and your nervous system and all of these pathways. We're talking about retraining how you stand, how you walk, how you think, and consistency is really, really important for that. 
Um, then the third thing you'll start to develop is along the lines of body awareness, the ability to know what you need to work on. So I get a lot of questions. What specific stretches should I be doing? What specific exercises should I be doing? The answer is, well, it really depends. There's some dancers who already have really open hips, but you can't touch their toes. I can't go to them and say, you need to be stretching your hips all the time because that's not right for them. They need to be working on their hamstrings. They already have a lot of flexibility in their hips. And realistically, probably that person needs to be doing strengthening in their glutes so that their hamstrings will stop tightening up and taking over. But that's not a blanket thing that you can tell anyone. And each of us has to, we're the only ones who live with our body. We're the only ones who can feel our imbalances and the things that are working well and the things that we struggle with. So we start to develop and say, while I'm working out, I say, you know, really every time I try to stand on my left leg, I feel like I'm going to fall over. Then maybe I'll work more on my left side stability. And then I start to develop the knowledge that my left side needs work. Then I can come at it with the question that says, I have trouble standing on my left leg, but I notice my right leg is a little easier. So therefore, what should I do to strengthen my left leg? And you can be really specific about your own questions about yourself. Again, being really curious and humble, um, coming at it from that perspective, the saying like, I'm curious about my left leg. Why? What's, what's going on with my left leg? How can I make it improved? How can I have it match my right leg? So asking all those questions, asking the questions about your body. Why does my left leg hurt when I stretch more? What's going on there? Why does my right leg hurt when I stretch more? What's going on there? Asking all of these questions is really important. Um, two more things here that you'll start to develop. Number uh, number uh, three here is, uh, I'm sorry, number four here is your optimism and your faith. So this is going to sound rather hokey, but you really need to believe that your consistency will result in something. You need to have a reason to show up every single day. You need to have a reason to continue coming back every single day. And that's not going to always, you can't rely on progress happening every single day. For the most part, you do five minutes of something, you feel nothing from it. It's it's very small part of your whole process. But if you do that 30 times, 100 times, 200 times, that really, really starts to compound. So you need to have, you need to develop the faith and the optimism that your work is going to result in something. And the last thing here is that you need to learn how to be okay with being uncomfortable, physically uncomfortable and mentally uncomfortable. Um, this is one of perhaps the most challenging things. It comes from curiosity and humility for sure all the way. So examples, um, at the end of a combination, you're really, really tired at the end of class, you're really, really tired. Um, some of this comes from knowing when you need to stop and when you can push your body more. So when do you need to stop? When do you really need to take a breather? When do you really need to stop? And when do you have a little bit more in the tank to give? That's first, that's something for all of us to figure out. You're really tired one day. Do you have the energy? Can you pull it out to go to ballet class? Or are you actually going to hurt yourself if you go for it? I can't answer that for you. No one can answer that for you, but you need to explore that and say, do I have more in the tank here? Am I okay with being uncomfortable? Is this level of discomfort okay for me to push through or do I need to stop? That is a really important thing for you to figure out about yourself because in order to take your body to the next level, you have to push through an amount of discomfort. You have to push through being tired. You have to push through not wanting to go. You have to push through some of those things and that's part of it. And honestly, sometimes you have to not go. Sometimes you have to stop. Sometimes you have to go see a doctor, but you have to figure that out. When is your body actually truly telling you something is wrong and when is your body just complaining a little bit and you can push through it? That's a really important thing if you ever want to get more stamina, build more strength. You have to learn how to push through that. Okay. So three key skills to improve a ballet or anything faster. We've got our humility. We have to be really humble as we explore all this. We've got to be curious. We have to wonder about things. We have to wonder all about this stuff. Um, and then number three, we have to have discipline. Um, so um, as we're getting started, all of this, my number one recommendation, if you're just like, not sure how to improve is just like pick anything and do it. That could be, I'm going to do 10 body weight squats every single day for a month and see what comes out of it. That will help you start to develop consistency, start to help you listen to your body, especially if you pick the same exact thing over and over again every single day. You can start to feel the differences in your body day to day and start to get to know your body. If some days you do 10 and some days you do 20, you don't necessarily get that same exact like comparison of apples to apples. You can start to say like, okay, well, I didn't really eat a good breakfast and I couldn't make those 10 squats happen today. So maybe a good breakfast and sleeping well is important for that. Or, you know, whatever, I was feeling really stressed at work today, so I couldn't, I couldn't pull my mind into the game to make those body squats work. That level of detail of understanding your body and your mind is really important for improving at anything, especially something physical, is understanding your relationship with your body and your mind and your actions. 
So pick anything and do it. And then over a period of time, let's say you did that for an entire month. By the end of the month, you can really see the results of that. You can really see something that's changed and that is going to develop a really important skill, which is not only discipline, but that optimism and faith that your work will pay off. That's an important thing to understand and to learn about yourself, that your work will pay off into something else because then you have all the power in the world. All you have to do is work hard and you know you're going to get somewhere. That's it. It's only hard work and then you get to the end result. It's not rocket science. It's just work hard, show up every day, keep going and you'll get there. That's the kind of um, optimism that we need to develop about ourselves and our abilities. Um, so as you get started with all of this, I think one last point I want to make here before I get to your questions. So leave your questions for me over there in the chat box. Um, so how you get started, try, do something, be consistent about it, make it simple and start to really observe your relationship with your body. So you can understand how far you can push, what you can do to help your body push farther and how you can work on that relationship with yourself. And then the other thing about specifically to ballet is that you want to make sure that your head is in in the game, take notes after class, take notes, try to apply, try to think about a category of recurring corrections that you always get. This one's really big and really specific to ballet. All that other stuff is great and awesome and super important. But if we're talking about specific to ballet, how to improve faster, not just like your physical skills and your mental capacity, but in ballet, how to improve faster. Think about the recurring corrections that you always get told. These are what you need to fix first. If your teacher always says, keep your shoulders down and you think, how important could it be? You need to go back and think, well, every single teacher tells me to get my shoulders down. What are they talking about? How often should I do it? And then just practice that specifically. Go through, find a class online, do it at home, do it at your own pace and go through and say, where are my shoulders not down? Where are my shoulders creeping up that I didn't even notice? Take a video of yourself. Watch yourself after the fact and see like where did my shoulders creep up and I didn't even notice it that I should put it down. And then start to notice the exact locations that you start to slip and lose the things that you're working so hard on. If, As another example, your teacher says, um, turn out your leg as you're closing your tongue. You always turn out your leg on the way in. Turn out your leg on the way in. And you're thinking, well, I already did turn out my leg all the way in. Well, they're still telling you. So perhaps maybe think about how why why they're telling you that where are you not doing it that you don't even realize that you're not doing it that's usually what it is it's a, it's a matter of you're trying but your body isn't quite doing what you think it's doing and your teacher is trying to help you see what you're not seeing with your body so you're getting the same correction over and over again like you're not turning out in your jumps and your landings and you're like well I feel like I am well there's somewhere in there where the teacher is seeing a moment that you're losing it that you're not sure about so take it slow go home video yourself take notes on these things that are like that you keep hearing over and over again and work towards these the smart dancer the thinking dancer the one who's writing down observing taking notes being curious is going to improve much faster because it takes that level of body awareness to be able to make these changes in your training. We're talking about making changes in your motor patterns, in your nervous system, in how you think, in how you move. So all of that stuff is really important. Now there is a component of strength to it, right? So if your teacher is saying you're always losing your turnout in your jumps, it's a possibility you need to be generally stronger. It's a possibility you need to strengthen your body. It's a possibility there's exercises you want to be figuring out. But again, you can come at it from that specific lens and saying, well, I always keep losing my turnout when I land a jump. So maybe I should try some one leg squats, even just in parallel to strengthen my balance on one leg. What can I do to isolate the challenge that I'm having? pull it out and try to really work on it and, and give some strength to it. So you want to think critically about what your teacher is asking you to do, what you think you're doing, and then where that gap is in between and what you can do to fill that gap. You want to always be thinking critically, applying what they're saying to different things. Again, this comes back to curiosity, humility, and discipline. It's so important. If you're not curious about what they're saying and you think, well, I'm already, I know I'm already doing it. So what could they possibly be asking you to do? Then you're not going to make those changes in your body because your mind is going to stop you from even exploring. So you want to make sure you're in a place where you can think, hmm, I thought I was already doing it, but there must be more in there that they're looking for that I haven't figured out yet. That is a really important statement to be able to say about your training and to be able to feel. Um, it can actually be really hard, especially as we're kind of perfectionist tendency as dancers where we want to be perfect already. We don't like to, um, we don't like to kind of take a step back to go forward, all that stuff. Um, it's, it's, it's challenging to be in that place, but you want to get there so that you can really take yourself to the next level and fill in those gaps along the way. 
where you are, where you want to be, and what your teacher's telling you, you want to really try to bridge that gap. Um, questions coming through, let me know your questions. I said my piece, you can always go back and watch it later, it'll be up on my channel, but I'm gonna answer your questions here, so make sure you put them over there in the chat box as well. Um, how do we work on being smooth, gentle, and graceful on transitions? Too choppy on it with strength. So I think a big, a big thing with gracefulness is is practice. So if you aren't sure which leg you're going to be standing on, if you're not sure how it goes through, you need to practice all of those transitions slowly so you understand the detail of how exactly your leg swings through from the back through to the next part. You want to be, as they say in uh, yoga, I love one thing they say about yoga, you need to be curious about every single step. You need to be curious about every single part of that transition and don't throw any moment away. You need to be really curious. You need to be really humble about every single part of it and say, gosh, as I swing my leg through from Fai, from arabesque, I'm in arabesque and I swing my leg through, it turns in in a brief moment and then I turn it right back out and go through. Well, that brief moment, is the moment that matters. That brief moment is the moment that's gonna make it look choppy or sloppy or any of those words. It's all of the in-between moments that make it the biggest difference. Um, do I have to stretch every day to improve my overall performance? Really depends on where you're coming from. I think you need to do something every single day, something, anything. It really depends on what you need for your body. Um, I think you I think consistency and discipline is incredibly important for improving in anything you want. Consistency, you have to expose your body and your mind to this stuff every single day. Um, a rest day doesn't, you, we need to rest, right? The body needs to rest. But a rest day could be studying. It could be watching videos. It could be taking notes. It could be reading notes. It could be exposing your body and your mind to it. Um, as I was saying earlier in the in the live stream, I think stretching for five minutes a day is significantly better than stretching one hour every other week because you're exposing your body to it over and over and over again. The thing we're trying to develop with stretching is a big is body awareness. So understanding what parts of your body are flexible, what parts need additional work, and what parts don't. So if you have really open hips, um, if you have really open hips, then you may don't you know maybe don't need to stretch those maybe you need to stretch your hamstrings maybe as you're working and you're not seeing any progress if you've been stretching every single day and you're seeing no progress maybe you need to integrate massage with a ball or a foam roller maybe you need to integrate strengthening exercises to target a weakness that's causing you to be inflexible you need to just be super curious about what's going on with your body and wondering always trying to tweak things but consistency is key. Do it every single day. Do it every single day. Get to know your body. Get to say like, wow, gosh, yesterday I was super flexible and today I'm feeling really tight. Could that be because I slept funny or I went for a really long walk or I worked out really hard? You want to start to know those things about yourself so you know when it's time to change strategy and when you can just keep pushing through and trust the process. Again, I can't tell you the exact answers. You're the only one who lives in your body, but this is what I've seen is just consistency and getting to know your body and the specifics about you. Does Pilates help dance? Absolutely. Um, if that is part of what gets you excited and gets you out of bed, then do Pilates. Um, it helps with your core. It helps with your body awareness. As I said, literally anything is helpful, especially in the beginning. You want to develop general strength, general flexibility, and a general mindset that helps you understand that your hard work leads to results. So if that means that you love Pilates and you want to do it six days a week and really get super strong and it gets you out of bed and it gets you really excited, then Pilates is the thing for you. If that's yoga for you, if that's going for a swim, if that's cycling, whatever it is, is important. Um, the big areas that we need for ballet, um, I assume you're asking in part because you want to know about what specific areas we need to strengthen. We need a strong core. We need strong balance. We need strong body awareness and general overall flexibility. So you can get this from many, many ways. You can get this from weights. You can get this from yoga. You can get it from Pilates. You can get it from planking. You can get it from push-ups. You can get it from body weight squats. You can get it from so many different things. You don't have to just do ballet related exercises to develop general strength, general physical fitness, general flexibility, and a good mindset. You can get it from any kind of activity. But Pilates specifically does help your core. And again, if it gets you out of bed in the morning and it gets you excited, Excited, then that's the thing. If it doesn't get you out of bed in the morning and it doesn't get you excited, then don't do Pilates. Find something else that you will do and that you will stick to, and that is going to help you as a gateway into something else that'll help you with a more specific ballet. So do something that you find enjoyable, that you will show up to do every single day or as often as you can. Obviously, again, we need rest days, but you want to do something that you can do as frequently as possible to keep your body and your mind sharp. 
Um, is it possible to be consistent and strong for doing doubles, triples on both sides, or is one side always going to be weaker than the other? This is an awesome question. Um, I think that so much of it has to do with your uh, your mindset, um, your the limits you put on yourself, the fear that you have within your pirouettes. If you go into a pirouette thinking it's not going to work out, it's not going to work out. If you go into a pirouette thinking it is going to work out, it still may not work out, but you have a much better chance of it working out. So if you go into it on your quote unquote bad side, or your weaker side, and you go into it going, like, oh gosh, this is my bad side. It's just not going to be that good. I guarantee you it's not going to be that good. Um, you can have a lot of consistency with your turns and anything technical. So there's like a difference between technique and physicality. So physicality is like, can you hold a grand plié for five minutes in a row? As an example, can you hold a grand plié in second position for five minutes in a row? There's not really technique to that. It's just like muscling it out. You've, you've got to just stay there and fight it. Holding a plank for two minutes. It's like very physical. But something technique, technique wise, um, where there are a lot of a lot of different elements have to line up all at the same time to create the action um, where you have to have the perfect amount of force, the perfect amount of up, the perfect amount of around, the perfect timing of your spot. There's a lot of elements that need to sort of like stack up at the same moment in time to make it happen. That's something that I would consider as a technical skill as opposed to like a physicality skill. And within a technical skill, your mind is a huge, huge portion of that. And when you're thinking about lining all of that up, if anywhere your mind knocks part of that out of alignment by saying, oh, you're probably not going to hit this, or gosh, your ankle is always so weak, it's it will respond to that. Your mind is like way more powerful than you think it is. So um, I think that it is possible to be consistent, especially if you have, if you work on your mindset, if you work on your attitude about your weaker side and you really go into it trying to feel as strong and confident as possible, you'll set yourself up for more success on that side. Having said that, there is there probably is going to be some limitation with your weaker side and your stronger side, but certainly the mindset is going to help you at least get consistent doubles, consistent triples. When we're talking about 32 fuetes or like the top, top, top of the top technical skills, generally you don't bother working on it on your weaker side. Um, you, you work on it on your stronger side. You focus in, you double down. But for something for doubles and triples, um, personally, I think you can get really consistent on both sides, especially when you work on your mind and you don't sabotage yourself with your mind. Um, yes, you're welcome for the mindset tip. I think the mind is incredibly powerful and can get in our way, but also propel us forward. Um, I think we'll just wrap up here. If there's any last questions lingering out there, leave them in the comments for me. Um, but I think the last tip that I have for you guys, just the last thing, we've got one more. Um, just started ballet. I'm loving it, but I struggle with my left and rights and general coordination and it makes me a bit slower um, than others. So, Yes. Um, general coordination, I think, comes from consistency, as I've been talking about consistency and discipline. You have to practice this stuff regularly. You have to practice all the time. You are tr you're making basically a new way to live ballet. You're like normally as a person, you know, our motor patterns are with our feet forward and you're making it. Uh, with your feet sideways. So you have to practice this stuff regularly. If that means doing a pot of beret for five minutes a day, then that's what you need to do. It's like you have to be really, really consistent with all of it. And you have to keep working on it every single day. So coordination is, there's many factors with coordination, one of which is understanding like which leg you're standing on. So if your weight is on your right leg, understanding what that means and how to shift your weight from your right leg to your left leg. So you want to be able to shift your body around side to side, front to back. Um, balancing is a huge part of coordination. If you feel like you're going to fall over, your body actually won't let you put your foot somewhere else. So again, as I mentioned, developing general strength helps with coordination, um, body weight, squats, core work, one leg, one leg, uh, single leg deadlifts or balancing exercises help with, with, general physical fitness strength um, balance and that will help you with body awareness which comes into play with coordination because you have to know which leg you're standing on to get onto the other leg so consistency I, I gave you probably too much there because I don't want you to get overwhelmed with what to do next but consistency do start with doing pot de beret every single day for seven days in a row, five minutes, work on pot de back and forth, and then move on to balance every single day, and then move on to, I don't know, a waltz turn, move, move through steps so that every single day you're working on something that involves thinking about your right foot and your left foot. It isn't, it, you think by this age you know how to stand. Um, I say no. <laughs> we don't know how to stand ballet in the ballet world. Ballet standing is totally different from like human standing. So work on it every single day. Work on something that involves footwork every single day. And I think you'll start to see some improvement. 
Um, personal, so launch a personal evaluation and plan to move forward would be a good idea. I know that would help me a lot. Is that something you would recommend? Um, yeah, I do. I think a personal evaluation is super awesome. Um, I think it's helpful to get advice on what's going on with you specifically. Um, it helps you kind of see a different perspective and see, um, see your body from a different perspective. I would say be cautious on relying on personal evaluations and, and make sure that you are also looking at yourself uh, sort of objectively and thinking about what you see as the weaknesses. Like, gosh, the teacher always says this, and I feel like I can't make that happen. You always want to be making sure that you're asking your own questions. It's always great to get a second opinion, but try not to rely on the second opinion. Um, good to get it once, but don't rely on it all the time and start to become really aware of your body and really aware of what's going on with what you can make happen and what you feel like is really a challenge for you. So yes, I think personal evaluation and plan is super helpful. Um, we'll actually be releasing something super exciting about that in November, um, but I don't think you should rely on it for always. I think the internal study is just as valuable as the second opinion and the personal evaluation. Um, if any other questions pop up, I am of course happy to answer them. Um, you can leave them in the comments as well. What age do you think someone should start point? Um, well, uh, it depends. Um, I only teach adults, so I can't really comment on it for kids. Um, I, there's, if, if for kids, there's an age for point, um, I would definitely defer to someone who teaches kids, um, full time. And is really in that world of what age kids should start point. Um, you definitely want to be sure that your bones are solid. You definitely want to make sure that your mind is in a good place. Um, so for kids, I don't know too much about that topic for adults. I think a bit more as strength criteria. Um, I have a video that I did on my YouTube channel live two weeks ago about exactly what I think of when I think about point readiness and what it means to me for my adult dancers. Um, so for adults, any age is fine. Um, as long as you have the criteria, the strength criteria, the flexibility criteria to get up there on point. Um, those again, take all of this stuff. They take discipline. They take consistency, all of that stuff to get there. But once you get there, um, an adult, as an adult, any age is fine with me. Um, again, with kids, uh, there's definitely an age limit as far as your bone structure and all of that stuff, but I can't comment on that knowledgeably. So I would defer um, to people who teach kids more full time for that. Um, so to wrap up here, dancers, leave me your questions in the comments. I am always very active in the in the comments um, on on YouTube. So leave me leave me your questions if you're watching this after it goes live, and I'll be sure to respond to you. Um, just to wrap up, I really think number one, consistency is key. Consistency and showing up every single day, even when you're not sure you want to show up. Showing up all the time teaches you um, a level of confidence and a level of um, self-efficacy that is really unmatched by anything else. So show up every single day. It doesn't really matter what it is. Don't get hung up on what specifically you should be doing every day. Do something. You will start to learn what to do every day. You will start to be curious and figure out what to do every day. Just start with something. As I mentioned, a great example is just doing 10 body weight squats every single day. Of course, if you have knee issues or back issues, make sure you check with your doctor first. But those, those are just simple places to start. Start somewhere, pick something. Doesn't really matter what it is. All of it will be helpful. All of it is going to be helpful along your way to your valley journey. So don't get hung up on the specifics. Just show up every single day as often as you can. Do it for yourself. Do it because you love ballet. Do it because ballet is amazing. And obviously, I'm obsessed with it too. Do it because you want it and because it means something to you. Do it. Show up every single day and you will start to see results really, really fast. So I hope this was helpful and I'll see you guys around the comments. Have an awesome rest of your day.